Hi, I am Danae Wolf, and I am a virtual CFO. So what exactly does that mean? It means that I am a financial clarity coach and a profit strategist. So I help entrepreneurs understand their financials so that they can utilize the data and make operational improvements in their business to help increase their profits. And I am here today to talk to you guys about how to take five easy steps to turn your passion into profits. And I just wanna say that I am so thankful to be speaking here today. I work with a lot of cleaning companies, so it was really an honor to be asked to speak today. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen with you guys, and we can get started. So I'm sure you guys have heard this before. If you fail to plan, you are planning to fail. And what I have found with most entrepreneurs is you do have a plan for 99% of your business. You can tell me the 10 steps for your marketing funnel. You can tell me the two week process that it takes to hire and train someone. But what you can't tell me is your financial plan. This is where we kind of drop the ball. Most businesses do not have someone implementing a finance plan. And I don't know if it stems from the fact that in our society, it is faux pas to talk about money, right? It's not something that most people are comfortable discussing. In fact, in the entrepreneurial community, it's very common for gurus, for lack of a better term, life coaches, business coaches, whatever you want to call them, um, to kind of spread this mantra of if you're in this for the money, you're in it for the wrong reason. I think that this is a message that is often spread and it's dangerous. It's a dangerous message because the reality is money makes the world go round. Okay, money is how you stay in business. So while I do believe that you should be in your business because you are passionate about it and there is a you know, higher meaning about it for you, the reality is if you wanna help people through your business, you're not gonna get very far if you don't have any money. Because if you don't have any money, your business is gonna go under and then you're not helping anyone. So the first thing I really want you guys to ask yourselves is, why did you start your business? This is something that I ask pretty much every client that I work with. And I typically get very deep responses, you know, something personal, um, you know, I was, my grandmother left me her recipes and I, I turned it into my restaurant. Um, I feel this passion and need to help people. Um, it was my calling. I felt drawn to it. And all of that is true. Okay, all of that is true. I do strongly believe that as entrepreneurs, we are dreamers and we are passionate and we follow our dreams and we follow our passions. But why? Why did we follow our dream? Why did we follow our passion? What was the actual motivator? To make money. To make money. That's the reality. But it's been looked down upon and frowned upon to say that, right? We're told, well, you know, if you're in this for the money, you're, you're just not going to be successful. You know, they say, follow your passion and the money will come. That is crap. That is just not true. Plenty of businesses have gone under by someone who was following their passion and ignoring their bank account. Because the truth is, if you don't know what's going on in your bank account, you don't know what's going on in your business. And when someone says to you that you can't be in it for the money, if they are running a for-profit business, they're a fraud. Because the truth is, money is not a dirty word. And profit is not a dirty word. And if you really really are coming from a place of you're just in your business to help people and you would have a nonprofit, okay? So if you have a nonprofit, this does not apply to you. But for everyone else, if you're in a for-profit business, I need to remind you, you are here 
to make money. And that's okay, right? We can own that. We can admit that. And one thing that I've seen come out of this whole COVID-19 craziness is entrepreneurs actually talking about money. When we're seeing entrepreneurs putting themselves out there and saying, you know, hire me, hire me. They're not saying our typical, you know, because I want to help people. And No, they're saying, I need to pay my mortgage. Like, please purchase a gift card. Please, sir, like, let me service you. How? Can, what can I do? Let me think out of the box. Let me pivot. Let me put my business online. We are seeing entrepreneurs fighting for their life. And why? Because they need the money. And they're actually admitting they need the money because that's how we keep the lights on. That's how we take care of our team. That's how we service our customers and and make the differences and the impacts in our community that we wanna have. We need to have money. And for some reason, that seems to be the one piece of business that entrepreneurs don't get lit up about. When I ask someone, how do you how do you hire and train new people? They're like, oh, well, I have this system and I have this Google Doc and everybody checks it off and da da da, da. Or, you know, maybe it's a, oh, it's a mess and I'm working on it, right? But when it comes to the finances, it's usually just, oh, it's a mess. There is no, but I'm working on it. And when I push them, I get the same responses all the time. I'm not a numbers person. Math isn't my thing. I don't understand QuickBooks Online. I don't understand how to use a spreadsheet. But guess what? I bet you also don't know how to change the oil in your car. But every time that light goes off, you find someone who does. You figure out a way to get it done. As entrepreneurs, we're scrappy. We can figure things out. But I've noticed we only figure out things that we think are important. Those are the things that we put our time and energy on. And somehow along the way, most have forgotten the importance of finances. Maybe it's because it's not a bill that comes in the mail every month, right? It's not like you get something, a document sent to your mailbox every month saying, hey, did you do your bookkeeping? That doesn't happen. So it's very easy to kind of shove it under the rug. But the reality is, if you are not paying attention to your numbers, you're not going to be profitable. And if you are not profitable, You don't have a business, you have a hobby. And if you are attending this today, something tells me your intention is not to have a hobby. Your intention is to have a company, a thriving company. And the only way to do that is to be profitable. And the only way to be profitable is to track your money, okay? We have to actually know where it's coming from, and where it's going. So the first steps that you can take in tracking your money is number one, I need you to separate your personal and business, all right? When we are going through the bank statement, we don't wanna see your Infusionsoft expense and then right underneath of it, see your Manny Petty. That doesn't belong there. It's not a business expense. It's just gonna deplete your profits and it's not necessary. You have a personal checking account, let's use that. Now, some of you might be the opposite. You might have a personal checking account that you're using as your business account. And instead there, I'm seeing your groceries mixed in with your Infusionsoft. We we don't wanna do that. We don't wanna commingle any funds. So we're gonna make sure that your business is run like a business, not like a hobby. And we're gonna make sure that we separate our personal and business finances. Then 
we're going to categorize the transactions, which means you are going to go line by line and say, okay, this was marketing, this was office supplies, and you're going to put them in these different buckets, these categories, so that you can see where your money is going. And you're going to review this data on a regular basis. Honestly, I recommend weekly. You should be looking at your finances every single week and seeing how did it go? How much money did I bring in in revenue? How much money did I spend in expenses? What was left over? That number that's left over, that's your profit. That's how you get to pay yourself. That's how you get to measure the success of your business. And what happens is a lot of times when you work with your accountant or you work with your bookkeeper, you're getting what's called lag reports. So you're getting stuff from the past, right? So it's already happened. You can't do anything about it. So if your accountant says, hey, you lost five grand last month, the month's already over, right? You can't do anything about it. But if you're looking at things on a regular basis, if you're in the bank account weekly, if you're reviewing these numbers weekly and you start seeing, hey, it's the second week of the month and I had a loss, you can turn it around, you can salvage it. But it does nothing for you to be looking at financial data that's old. You need to be thinking about future focused financials, okay? That's how we move the needle. That's how we make strategic decisions in our business. And that's how we will come to realize that revenue does not matter. This is a very big misconception in the entrepreneurial community. And I'm sure you guys have seen, probably on your Facebook ads, <laughs> this is where I feel like I see it the most. You know, somebody running an ad saying, want to know how I made $50,000 last month? Well, the reality is when they say I made $50,000, nine times out of 10, what they mean is that their revenue was $50,000. Revenue does not tell us what profit is. Profit is queen. That is the queen bee. That is the only number that matters. And I'm gonna tell you why. I have seen customers of mine who have revenues of three, four hundred thousand dollars a year make more in profit than companies who did over a million in revenue. True story. So a lot of times we are chasing this revenue and we are doing everything we can to grow that revenue. And we might be investing in marketing and overspending. And you can get yourself in a situation where you actually increased your revenue because you did a lot of marketing, but you decreased your profit because you overspent. But you won't know that unless you're in the numbers. Another common thing that I see is we spend all this money on marketing, but then we don't take the time to see, did it work? We didn't track it. So you ran ads on Facebook and you ran ads on Google. But did you take the time to say, how much money did I spend on Google? How much money did I spend on Facebook? And how much money did they generate? This is something that I go through with every new client. We go through a marketing report and we say, okay, where did we actually make money? What was the best use of our funds? And I will tell you, nine out of 10 times, the entrepreneur says to me, oh, hands down, it was, I'll just give an example, it was Yelp. Yelp is where I make the most money. And, and we go in and run the numbers and I'm usually telling them they're wrong. No, you actually got the best return on investment on Google, not on Yelp. So numbers don't lie, right? They, they don't lie. They tell the story of your company, but you have to be listening. You have to be paying attention in order to hear that story. And a lot of times we just kind of go off of a feeling you know, what we think, you know, we think Yelp is the most popular. We think that's what people tend to tell us is Yelp. But did you actually pull a report? Did you actually look at the data? Okay. If you have a plan for how you 
hire people, train them, and, and get them onto the job site, you need to also have a plan for how you monitor and track your numbers. It's the same thing. There should be a plan for every single department in your business. It shouldn't stop when we get to the money, especially when money is the number one thing, right? That's how we're gonna make sure that we stay afloat and we stay in business. I want you to really be able to start thinking like a CFO. I want you to reprogram your brain and say, how can I make sure that my business is supporting the life I desire? This is something that I often see is not aligned. Entrepreneurs will feel like they are on a hamster wheel and you're running faster and faster and you're still getting nowhere because you are not building a business that can support the life you desire. And oftentimes you are stuck in what I call entrepreneurial poverty. You're working and working and you're not making any money. And on the outside, okay, the facade, everything is great. You have a beautiful website. You have a carefully curated Instagram feed. But when we actually pop the hood and take a look and see what's going on in the numbers, the Empress has no clothes, okay? There is nothing good to report there. But on the outside, everything looks great. And entrepreneurs are struggling in silence. I mean, the, the truth is, I get on calls with people and sometimes they cry. They break down and cry because they know that they are putting everything into their business and they're broke. They're broke. And it's because they are ignoring their numbers. And because they're broke, they're so frustrated by their numbers. Now they don't want to look at them even more. Even more they're putting it off when that's really when you have to be getting in. And again, I think it's, you know, part of, partly a societal, societal thing, right? People don't like to talk about money. It's faux pas. And then I think there's a sense of shame, right? There's a sense of shame. People don't want to admit that they're financially struggling. But we have to get into these numbers and we have to see, is this business working for my life? Is it going to give me the life that I want? How much money do you want to make? How many hours do you want to work? Here's a real life example that I got from one of my clients. So they said they wanted to make $100,000 a year and they wanted to work 20 hours per week. When you do that math, they would have to make $96 an hour. That was not realistic with the service they were selling. It was not realistic. So this entrepreneur was never gonna feel satiated because they were building a business that could not support the life they desired. So when was the last time that you sat down and thought about this? What is the life you desire? What is the day-to-day that you would love to have? Like, what is your ideal day comprised of? What time do you wake up in the morning? How many hours do you work? Are you working from home? Are you working on the road? Ask yourself these questions. Plan out your ideal day. Is your business equipped to give you that? Think about how much money you wanna make. Look at your personal expenses, your personal um, life that you need to support, the life that you want, that ideal lifestyle. How much money will it take to support it? And will your business be able to do that for you? You won't know unless you're in there looking at the numbers. And remember, what you focus on, you create more of. I wholeheartedly believe that. So if you are just kind of mulling in your head all the time that you're broke, that's what's gonna keep happening. But if we are instead looking at our revenue and expenses and focusing on the profit, that's how you're gonna make that shift in your mind to start thinking about 
the profit in your business because that is the number one stat that you need to be paying attention to. That's the most important metric in your business. So to recap, I want you to separation of church and state. We're gonna separate that business and personal finances. We're gonna organize and track them. We're gonna review that data. We are gonna set goals for our life and make sure that our business is in line with them. And we are gonna focus on things that make us money, which means that if you are gonna spend more than 20 minutes on something, I want you to say, is this gonna make me money? And before you buy anything and you swipe that business debit card, I want you to say, is this going to make me money? Is this an investment or is this an expense? So in closing, I would love to be able to keep in touch with you guys. So I wanted to give you guys a couple of ways. I have a Facebook group called The Profit Factor. I would love to see you guys in there. And I put my website on there. It's also on the bottom there. It's the Chic CFO. And I'm starting to talk fast because I know that we have to get ready to close up these presentations. Um, I also have a YouTube channel. You can go there and search for me under my name, Danae Wolf. And I have a free profit calculator. The link is there. I believe that they're gonna have it posted in the conference as well. It's a really great tool. It's really easy to use. It's gonna ask you a few simple questions that you'll be able to get the answers to, and it will calculate for you how much profit you should be able to take out of your business and how much you should be able to save for um, taxes and how much you should be able to pay yourself. So I love it. It's one of my most favorite tools that I've put together. So definitely check that out. And I hope that you guys got something valuable out of this today. And in closing, I really just want to say, don't allow the fact that you are intimidated by numbers to prevent you from diving into them. It's really, really the number one way to become more profitable in your business. And I know it from personal experience, not just with myself, but with countless clients over the years. If you wanna make more money in your business, you have got to get into your numbers and figure out what's going on. Remember, if it doesn't make money, it doesn't make sense. Bye, guys.